Hello everyone and welcome to Tech with Robert to get started with T-SQL course. In this lecture we're going to talk about, we're going to continue on talking about joins, but we're going to talk on the join criteria when you sometimes have to join on multiple fields. But before we get started, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, give a thumbs up on the video if you like what I do, that really helps me to know what I do well and what you guys want me to improve on or focus more on in the future lectures. So without further ado, let's dive right in. So once again, I have prepared a script here with some data for this lecture. I'm going to link that in the description. And I see my cat here also wants to be a part of this lecture. <laughs> and so let's say we're on a query here, okay? So we say select star from person, and select star from person sales. Right, and you know, most of the time we will have the luxury of having unique ID fields that we can work with, so it's very convenient because a lot of times we can just simply, you know, when we query in a column from a table and we can use an inner join, and we only have to specify a one join condition because we so oftentimes we can guarantee that when we join two fields together, that if we have, for example, sales ID. Uh, customer ID one in the sales table when, when we perform the join and do a lookup in the customer table oftentimes we can inf uh, really be 100% sure that we will never get more than one match because it's always going to be only one person uh, customer with customer ID one either only one row with customer ID one or you don't find a match and then you get a null. so this the, the, these two scenarios but we don't always have that luxury. So consider this case here. We have a table called person where we have the person ID, person name, last name, and the phone number. And then we have a sales table where we have the sales order ID, and then the person name and the person last name and the sales amount. And so I'm also gonna run this query. So we're gonna say select count star from person sales. I'm gonna show you in a minute why I'm doing this. You give a comment here and say that this person sales table contains eight rows, right? And so now if we run a query and we say, we want to, I'm gonna explain this. We want to, let me just start by saying select star from person sales. I'm gonna name it PS. I would say, I want to select the PS dot sales order ID ps dot person name if I can learn to type correctly ps dot person last name and then also ps dot sales amount so basically just select count star <laughs> and now we do an inner join and we say that okay we want to join to the person table and give it an ls of p and we want to join on ps dot person name is equal to p dot person name right and so when we run this query we see that what's happening here is that actually let me switch the inner join to a left join so that is usually what you would begin with when you are working with a this in, in this case called a transaction table so unless you know really what you're doing and what the conditions and criteria are, you would always want to, in your query, get all of the rows from the person, uh, from the transaction, your base table. This is all, uh, many times called a base table, the table that you provide in the from statement, right? Base table. And so watch what happens now. I do this query with the left join, and now as you can see, we get 10 rows. And so why do we get 10 rows? Because when we wrote select count star from this person sales table, we only had eight transactions. So how come when we write this query and get the person information, we can actually just say we want p dot, uh, let's say we want the person phone. That is the whole idea. That is the whole reason why we did the join to the person table because we wanted to include the person phone number in the query and that information was stored in the person table let's say for argument's sake and so then we say so how can we get 
10 rows. And if we actually, if we just write another query and we say select the sum of the sales amount from the person sales table. And we see that the sum of the sales amount is 2,850, right? And don't worry if you don't understand this syntax yet. Uh, very shortly, we're going to be covering subqueries. But let's say that with the results that I got here, this generated a query for us, a, a table for us. So let's say that I say, I want to select the sum of the sales amount from the table that we got in return from this query, right? And so when I run this query, we get that the sum is 3200, but we knew that without any filters, you know, where clauses, joins, and anything, just simply all of the data in that table, the sum of the sales amount was 2850. So why do we get more when we do this query here? How come we don't get 2850? How can we get 3200? And so the reason is, if you look closely to the data here, let me just get rid of this subquery here. And if I just write, I copy this query, and I'm just gonna copy it and don't do the left join. So I'm just gonna get everything from that base table. I'm gonna run these queries at the same time so we can see. And so the first table here is the this person tables and we see here that we have we got a transaction and we got Robert Anderson with a sales amount of 100 and then we had another sales order ID with Robert Johnson for 250 but notice here we here in this first table we have the only two because we had two transactions where the for where the for the person name was Robert and that is correct in this table but in the query below here we get four rows with Robert so you see we get Robert Anderson two times and we also get Robert Johnson two times but we only had one Robert Anderson and one Robert Johnson so why why do we two of each that is because we are only joining on the person name and consider this It goes to this row here, uh, you know, it, it, it goes through all of the rows, but then it comes to this row here and it says, okay, I'm only including, we're only doing our join on the person name. So when it gets to this row, it says, okay, Robert in the set person table, and I'm going to look that value up in the person table. So then it goes to the person table and it sees Robert, but we have two Roberts. So we have one which is Robert Anderson and we have Robert Johnson. So how does SQL Server know which one of these Roberts to include in the results of the query? We only provided the person name, we only provided one column. So we only gave it Robert to work with. But when it goes to that table and say, okay, I, find, I found two Roberts, how can it know which one is the is correct? is the correct one and tied to that actual transaction. It cannot know that. It could either guess, and if we have two uh, rows with Robert, it would be a 50-50, and if we had four, it would be a 25% chance of getting the correct one. But that would be very stupid, so it just says, uh, sorry, I looked up Robert, but I couldn't find a unique match. I found two Robert, so I'm sorry, I don't know which one is the correct one, so I'm going to include both of them, or you know, all of them. And so that is the reason. So we get that Robert Anderson transaction with the sales amount of 100. We get that twice. So that means that if we were, that means that the sum of the sales amount for that one is 200 instead of 100. So we get the total sales is higher than it actually is. And that is because we're getting duplicate rows. So we need to in the join when we perform a join and that, this is regardless if it's an inner join left join right join outer join self join, whatever type of join we're doing from your base table you want to point out one specific row and you want to perform a join but you need to give the sql server all the information it needs in order to you know take the information together and creating a unique key. I'm not going to talk 
a lot in detail about different type of keys in T-SQL, but I can mention a few. So let's say here, it's called a primary key. So in this case, and that is usually the case, but we, every time we add a new sales order ID or, or a sales transaction, it just automatically increments. So when we have in another table, we have the sales order ID eight. When we perform a lookup on another table, which also has the sales order ID, we can ensure that we will always only have one row because it always, every time we add a, a record to the table, it automatically increments with one. So that is called the primary key. And that is used to enforce that we don't get duplicate rows. So it's like enforcing the integrity of that table. But in this case, since we have the only the person name for both tables, that is not enough to guarantee a unique row in the lookup table, in the person table in this case. So what we need to do is we need to sort of create a, another type of key that's called a, a composite key. So it's composed of different fields and put together, they uh, perform and give a unique value. And so consider this case, if we were to say, we want to say the Rob. We want to perform the lookup, and we're gonna give it. So say Robert, and the last name. So give me a row where the first name is Robert and the last name is Anderson. And then, since we only have one value with Robert Anderson in the person table, SQL Server we know that okay. So the first name is Robert, and the last name has to be Anderson. Okay. Then I take that person. But it cannot know when we write the join condition like this so we need to provide multiple fields multiple join conditions and when i do that i usually like to format the code like this and so we need to say that we need to join on the person name is equal to the person name from the person's table and the person sales person last name should be equal to the person last name from the personal uh, from the person table and so now when we run this query, we see that now we get the eight rows. So now we see we only get Robert Anderson transaction with the salesman of 100 once. Because it said here, it said, okay, do a lookup to the person table and do it to join on the, first, the person name and the last name. So it goes there and says, okay, the first name is Robert and the last name is Anderson. And in, in this way, when we combine these two fields together, Robert Anderson, we only got one unique row. And so that is why we get the correct numbers here. So if we were to do a select the sum of the sales amount from this result here in our new query, we should get the same sum amount that we do when we just wrote some sales amount like this without any filters. And that is correct, yeah. And so now when we run this, when we have specified the correct joining condition, now we get 2,850, which is the correct sales amount. When we just run the simple select sales amount from that table without any filters or joins. And so it's very, very important to understand this concept because when you're working as a business intelligence developer, data analyst, or SQL developer or whatever and the people your colleagues the people in your organization are using your the data from the database to create reports whether it's Excel Power BI reporting services click or whatever usually they are asking for queries that the SQL developer will write and then it's going to they're going to create reports and present data to you know the shareholders or whatever and oftentimes you get the request that somebody says, ah, this, this number doesn't seem correct. I don't think we have this much sales. I think something is wrong here. I think there's, I think there's something wrong in the query. And one very common bug is that you don't have the correct joining condition in your query. And in the next lecture, I'm going to show a little tip and trick that I use because you will not have the luxury, believe me, when you work with this in your uh, in your real life job, you will not have the luxury of getting these a uh, simple query like this. You will usually get, you know, 
I've got an Aquarius which is like 500 rows and it has like 40 or 50 joints and a lot of different joint conditions. And if you just run that whole query and somebody says, oh, I think there's someone, something is wrong here, the sales amount is too high or too low or whatever, and you just copy that query and run it, like how are you going to debug it? It's impossible. You need to have a methodology on how you break down the problem to smaller problems. and. I'm going. I, I, I was going to save this for the tips and tricks sections, but I might as well talk a little bit about it, and I'm going to do that in the next lecture. So I will see you guys there.